Hello everyone, Mauro here. In this video, we're going to look at the new features and changes that Microsoft is rolling now with the Windows 11 version 24H2, also known as the Windows 11 2024 update. Although version 24H2 is already available, it is only partial because it is only available for Coppola Plus PCs and during the second phase of this release, check the video description for release date information. The feature update will be available for new Intel and AMD devices, as well as for existing computers already running Windows 11 and those Windows 10 PCs compatible with this version. Microsoft has been releasing some features and changes as part of the Windows 11 version 23H2 through the regular system update. So I'm not going to review them in this video, but I might just mention some of them. Also, whenever you install the new update, you are likely not going to get all the features at once because Microsoft always rolls them out gradually. So just keep that in mind. Okay, let's walk through the new features and changes for Windows 11 version 24H2. But before, please subscribe to the channel and click the like button to help YouTube show this video to more people. It doesn't cost anything and you will be helping the channel and supporting my work. Now let's kick off this overview for version 24H2 with the new changes for the taskbar. After installing this feature update, you will notice that the quick settings flyout has been updated with a new interface that ditches the edit option to add or remove items with different pages that you can scroll down with the mouse. You can also click right here to navigate each of the pages. This will make it easier to access all the items because before, if you didn't know that you have to click the edit button, you would miss on those features. Also from the uh, quick settings, you can now turn on and off live captions. In the taskbar, you will also notice that the progress bar in apps has been updated to make it easier to understand. However, this is just a subtle change. On Windows 11 version 24H2, you will also be able to show a shorter version of the time and date on the system trade. In that option, you're actually going to find it on the date and time page. So basically, this option has been updated. So if you check this option, you will now be able to show a shorter version of the time and date. You can also show seconds. This is not a new feature. However, this option was previously on the taskbar settings and now has been transferred to this setting. Okay, for the longest time, you were able to use the Windows key plus T to focus right into the taskbar. But now, after you invoke the shortcut, you can use the first letter of the app and that will jump directly into the app that starts with that letter. For example, I just pressed the F key and it jumped to the File Explorer button in the taskbar. Now, if you press the Home and N keys, you can see that the taskbar will jump to the first and last app in the bar. Also, if the taskbar uses the option to uncombine apps, the operating system will actually use the name of the window to jump to the different locations. Another feature that Microsoft is including with this update is new show hover cards for inactive and pinned taskbar apps. And basically when you turn that on, if you hover over an app that is inactive or just pinned into the taskbar, it will open the jump list directly so you can have access to different actions. Now, if the app is already running, you will only see the thumbnail. At first, when Microsoft announced this, I thought it was a good idea. I had it turned on and after a few moments, the feature actually didn't work for me because you can easily hover over by mistake into the apps. So you're going to get those job list menus opening up randomly. So in my case, I prefer to have this option disabled. And as you can see now, when you hover over the apps, you're only going to get the tooltip with the name of the app. And if you hover over an app that is running, you will still get the thumbnail. Now let's continue with the start menu. In this feature update, we're getting a sidebar, as you can see right here, that allows you to access your Android phone basic information. For example, with this sidebar, you can check the connection to your phone and you can see the status for the Bluetooth and battery. You can also access your messages, calls, photos, and under recent, you're going to see your most recent notifications. However, there is not much you can do with this feature because these are just links to the different features inside of the uh, phone link app. So let's say if I wanted to access or I wanted to see calls information, if we click that, that will actually open the phone links app 
to get to that information. Now, this feature is not turned on by default. So after you link your phone to your computer, you will need to go to the settings tab and then from the uh, personalization section, you need to go to the start settings. And in here, you're going to see a new show mobile devices and start option that you need to turn on. Now, if this feature happens to be turned on automatically and you don't want to use it, you can turn it off right here. And as you can see, now the sidebar is no longer available. Let me know in the comments what you think about this new feature for the start menu. Now, you might not see it on this menu, but Microsoft is also updating the recommended section right here at the bottom. And basically, you will now see recently used apps and promotions from the Microsoft Store. However, I do believe that promotions for apps from the store also available for version 23H2. Also, I'm not sure about this, but we might even soon be able to see folders that will group recently added apps. Now, if you want to prevent the start menu from showing promotions from the Microsoft Store, you need to go to settings, you need to open settings, and then you need to go to personalization, start, and here you want to turn off the show recommendations for tips, app promotions, and more. Now, this is not a new feature, However, on new installations, if the device includes the default Windows 11 wallpaper or a solid color for the background, Windows version 24H2 will now enable the uh, Spotlight feature automatically. Even further, Windows now includes the proper support for HDR images. This means that if you set an HDR image on a supported display, the system will be able to display that image properly in the background. Starting with version 24H2, File Explorer is getting a few new improvements. For example, the homepage has been updated with the addition of tabs for recent, favorites, and share. Before, you will have a section for recent and favorites. The share tab is new, and that will actually display the files that have been shared with you. And if you're using a business account, you will also see comments from files that have been shared with you. And as you can see, if there is nothing to show for a particular tab, you're going to see an icon with some information about what you're not seeing content on the tab and how you can address that issue. The file manager now includes a new compression wizard that allows you to create tar 7z and zip files. So and to access this new compression wizard, you just need to go to the file or the folder that you want to archive and then just right click on it and then go to compress to and you can directly create a zip 7z and tar file using the default settings. However, you can click on additional options and that will open the new wizard. From here, you can change from the different archival formats and each archival format will have different compression methods. And even for zip. Once you selected the archival format, and the compression method. If available, you can use the compression level. If you set more compression, the file will be smaller. However, it's going to take more time. If you use less compression, the file is going to be a bit larger and the process will be faster. And you also have options for hard links and symbolic links. Once you selected all your settings, just click the create button. And that's it. You can always select the file and extract all the contents. Or you can actually double click and browse instead of the archival format. One thing that I wanted to point out using this feature is while you have different options for compression and to change the format, you can only work with archival formats without encryption or password. If you need to work with encryption or password, you will need to use a third party tool. I'm pretty sure that Microsoft is not adding these particular features to not overstep on other applications that might offer those benefits. Also, if you're extracting files from an archival format and there is a conflict with a file, you will now be able to skip or replace all the conflicts. Also for PNG files, when you go to the properties for a particular image, you will now be able to edit the metadata, including the start, changing description, and adding keywords. Now in File Explorer, 
Microsoft is also updating the right click context menu. So now each of the top options for cut, copy, rename, share, and delete. Now these options include labels. In the past, they didn't. And even though the icon should be enough to let you know the action, it was a bit confusing. Now, if you have multiple tabs in a single instance of File Explorer, as you can see right here, if you hover over the up icon on the taskbar, the preview will now let you know how many tabs they're open on that particular instance. And you're not only going to see this on the thumbnail preview, but also if you use the Alt Tab keyboard shortcut, as you can see right here. Now, this is also a new feature. However, it's also new on version 23H2. And that is that when you right click a tab, you will now have the options to duplicate that specific tab. Also, the share interface has been updated. And now if you have your Android phone connected to your computer using the phone link app, you will now see it as a device to share content directly, as you can see right here. Recent updates for File Explorer also brought the ability to drag a file to the breadcrumb on the address bar. And that's also new for version 24H2. However, it's also new for version 23H2. Now, you probably have already noticed that I have my phone listed on the left side of the File Explorer. However, I'm not actually connecting my phone using a USB because now there is a new feature through the mobile devices experience that allows you to connect to your phone storage directly from File Explorer. So in order to enable this feature, you need to go to settings and then on Bluetooth and devices, you need to open mobile devices. Then you need to turn on this feature right here and then you need to click on manage devices. In here, you have to make sure to add your phone. And then when the feature is available to you, you need to turn on the main feature. And then you need to turn on the show mobile device and file explorer toggle switch. Once you do that and you restart file explorer, you're going to see that you can access your phone storage as if the device were connected using a USB to the computer. Once the phone is connected to your computer and you click on it, you will notice the storage folder. And from here, you can just drill down and to any of the available directories. Uh, let's say, let's go to a uh, download. And from here, you can copy or delete the file. So let's just copy this file and let's transfer it to this folder. It is important to note that you're using a wireless connection, so it is not as fast as if you were connecting with a USB cable. In the same way, you can actually, let's just rename this to something else, and you can copy a file from your computer and then transfer it to your phone. You just need to let it sync for a bit and now the file is on the device. You also notice that the phone will appear as connected on the address bar with a tiny icon about the phone and it actually shows the wallpaper that you're using on your device. If you click on it, it will also give you the status of that device with the storage available. If we click this option, we get some network information and if we click on manage devices, that will actually open the uh, manage device settings that we can also access from the settings app. And you can also click on here to access the recycle bin on your Android phone. It is important to note that the option to use your phone as a webcam and getting photos notification is already available on computers running Windows 11 version 23H2. So the only new feature does the one that shows the device on File Explorer. Now, for the next feature that I want to show you, I have to connect to my laptop remotely because that's where I have that feature. And that is voice focus. And this is a feature that reduces the noise when speaking to a microphone. And to find this feature, we need to open the settings up. And then on system, we need to go to sounds. And then under the input section, you will need to go to the properties for the microphone. And then at the bottom, under the audio enhancements settings, you're going to find the new voice focus option. However, there are two versions of this feature and they're both called the same thing. The first requires an NPU to use AI to analyze your microphone input. And then the second option 
which is the one that I have available right here. When you turn this on, you will be able to use voice focus. However, it will use software in order to reduce noises when you're speaking to a microphone. Now, if you're wondering, I'm just using a third party app in order to connect remotely to the laptop because through the regular remote desktop connection, I'm not able to see this feature because how the connection works. So I'm actually using type BNC as the server for the uh, connection. And then I'm using the remote Ripple software in order to connect from this virtual machine where I'm recording this video. Also from the uh, properties of the microphone, we now have a new option to test the mode for the microphone audio processing. You have two options. You have default and communication, and you can press the start button to test this functionality. And once you selected the mode, you can record and listen the audio to choose the processing mode that provides the best result for you. It is important to note that Microsoft says that this tool is only for testing and it will not affect the actual audio mode. Now let's go to the developer settings. Because from here, you can enable one of the new features for version 24H2, and that is the uh, sudo command. So Microsoft is adding the sudo command to Windows 11, a feature that has been available on Unix-based operating systems such as Linux and Mac OS since the 1980s. sudo, or super user do, is a command tool that allows you to run elevated programs without running the Windows terminal as an administrator. You can perform many operations using this command, such as deleting protected files, invoking elevated commands, and opening a new terminal to perform any task. You must enable this feature manually from the For Developer Settings page. And in here, you need to turn on this option, and then you need to configure how you want to use the sudo command. If you want to have a similar experience, like on Linux and Mac OS, you want to use the inline option. Now, let me show you the uh, sudo command in action. So I'm going to open the uh, Windows terminal as a standard user. And then if you want to see all the options available with sudo, just type sudo. And then we need to use this command and that will show you all the available options. Now, one thing to remember with this version is that it's not as feature rich as the one available for Linux or Mac OS, but it allows you to do basic things. So let me just uh, do a dir command right here to view all the available files. And usually from the uh, root of C, you can delete files. So I have a test file called mycode.txt. And if I try to delete this, you're going to see that I'm going to have the access denied message because this shell is not running elevated. However, if now we run the same command, but we use the sudo option and then we press enter, we're going to see that now we elevated this particular command on a standard shell and the file has been deleted from the system. I already created a video showcasing this feature in more detail, so I recommend you to check the video description to grab the link to view the full guide on how to use the sudo command on Windows 11. Now for the next feature, I also have to connect to my laptop because that's where I'm going to find the changes for the power and battery page settings. So in here, we're going to find a few improvements. First, we're going to find that now we have the energy saver feature. This is a new power saving mode that replaces the existing battery saving mode and not only helps to extend the battery life on devices, but also works to reduce the energy usage on computers without battery. The power saving mode actually is based on the battery saving mode and the power board features, meaning that it works in the same way, but extending the battery life and reducing the energy usage by trading off system performance. So if you're in a laptop, this is how the settings are going to be available to you. You can change the options to always use energy saver. You can choose when to turn on battery saver on your computer. And you also have the option to lower the screen brightness to save energy. Now, if we go to my other computer that is not connected to a battery, you're going to see that we have the energy saver mode, but the settings are different. But when you turn on this feature, it allows you to save energy. With this release, Microsoft is also updating the power mode 
feature. However, the feature remains the same. The only change is that now you can choose the power mode that you want to use if your computer is plugged in or is running on battery, as you can see right here. Now, this is not a new feature on Windows, but it's new inside of the settings app because now you have the option to change the action for the power button. And when closing the lid, on your computer through the settings app before you needed to use control panel. And from here, you can choose when your computer is plugged in and you press the power button. What is it you want to do? The option is to do nothing, sleep, hibernate, or shut down. And the same as for closing the lid. And on battery, also we have the same features. This is a small change, but it took a long time in order for Microsoft to like get it to the settings app. Now, if you're on a regular computer, the setting will, will be called power button controls and you also have like one option and from here you can choose the action that you want to have when pressing the power button now if we go to the storage spaces settings and then if you have a full configure one thing that you will notice with this new version of windows is that now it is easier to delete storage pool with a single click. In the past, you needed to delete the space and then remove all the drives from the pool in order to delete the pool. And if the option is available, you can also more easily upgrade the storage pool. Okay, so I noticed that the pool that I was using had some issues and so I had to recreate it. And now I can show you one more thing about the changes for this particular feature. And that is that now the status will show as OK instead of a green check mark. And let me show you really quick the experience deleting a storage pool. And once you click the delete button, you will get this message. And then you just need to click the delete storage pool button to complete the process. And that's it. Now let's open the uh, display page. And in here, what's new for version 24H2, that is the uh, color profile page. And this is basically the way for Microsoft to bring the color management settings to the settings app. Everything works as the legacy settings. You can add a new color profile for a specific monitor. So if you have multiple monitors on your computer and they require different profiles, you can select the display right here. And then you need to download or import the uh, profile to your computer. And then you can click the add profile button to find it. And then you can add it to the system. From here, you can select the uh, profile that you want to use and you can set it as the uh, default if that's something that you need to do. Here you have some options to filter and sort the uh, profiles if you have many of them. And from here, you can also open the uh, color calibration tool, but that's still the uh, legacy version of that tool. Now, since we are on the uh, display section, uh, let me show you that the uh, graphics page has also been updated. And basically what we're going to see here is that the page now matches the design language of Windows 11, but the uh, settings remain the same. You can select the uh, graphics card that each specific application uses. Of course, by default, Windows decides which one to use, but you can change that preference right here. If you change it, you also have different options that you can select. And if you want to reset the settings, you can click this button right here. So basically this page remains completely the same as before, just the design has changed. And for example, before you needed to open another page to enable the optimization for windowed games feature, but now that option has been transferred to the main graphics page. Now, if we go to the advanced display page, nothing has changed here too. I'm talking about like new additional features. However, what's changed is that the refresh rate setting now separates the dynamic rate option on a separate setting. Before, you needed to choose that option right here. But now, if the monitor on your computer supports it, you can turn it on right here. If we go to the About page, nothing has actually changed here regarding the settings. However, when you click the Rename This PC button, we're going to notice that we have an interface that now matches the Windows 11 design. Now, Microsoft is also updating the uh, printer settings. So if we go to printer and scanners, the uh, first thing that we're going to see this change, that is the addition of the Windows protected print mode. And basically this new feature allows computers to print using the new universal modern print stack or a driver 
designed to work only with Mopria printers. This feature lets you connect a printer to Windows 11 without the need of any third party software. And this offers better security and the easy to connect experience. It is important to know that once you connect a printer and you turn on this feature, all the other drivers previously installed on your computer will be removed from the system. And that is for a good reason, because that can be a security concern on the computer. Now, if you go to a specific printer and then one thing that is new on this update is the additional print settings. And from here, you can now do two new things. One is that you can now rename the printer directly from the settings app without the need to use control panel. And then when you're printing, you can pause and resume print jobs. Also, there was an option only available on control panel. Now, if we jump back to the mouse settings for version 24H2, Microsoft is actually adding two new settings that you can configure for your mouse. One is that now you have the ability to turn on the enhanced pointer precision feature right from the settings app before this feature was available through control panel. And the other option that Microsoft is adding to this page is the ability to change the scrolling direction. And this is actually a new feature for Windows. In the past, you were able to change the direction of the mouse, meaning that you can change the motion from scrolling down to scroll down or do the down motion to scroll up using the registry that it was not an option on control panel to perform this configuration. But now we have that option available through the setting set. I also have a tutorial on how to actually do this. So make sure to check the video description for the link to the video for that tutorial. And let's jump to the network and internet settings. And let me start by saying that on this feature update, we're going to see some improvements for networking. First, Microsoft is setting support for Wi-Fi 7. This is the latest wireless technology standard based on the uh, Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E, and it offers a maximum speed over 40 gigabits, which is significantly faster than the 9.6 gigabits on Wi-Fi 6. Of course, you will need a Wi-Fi 7 network core and an access point that support the same technology in order to use this feature. Also from the uh, Wi-Fi settings, when you go to a specific connection and you click the button to show the wireless password, the feature will now create a QR code that you can scan with the camera phone or the camera app on your Windows device in order to share this connection to other computers without having to send the password to other users. And that makes the connection a little more difficult. This makes it a lot easier. Another small change that we're going to see on this update. And that is if we open the uh, quick settings and then we go to the Wi-Fi page to connect to a network, we're going to find in the bottom right corner an option to refresh the network list. Before, we needed to wait for the process to time out and refresh automatically. But now that option is available right here on the uh, quick settings. And finally, Starting with this release, when you install Windows 11 on a computer, the initial setup will include an option to install the network drivers if that is necessary. Now, if we go to personalization and then we go to the colors page, if you have the light mode option turned on, you will notice that this option will now grade out the show accent color for star and touch bar and it will let you know that this option is only available when using the dark mode. Now let's go to accessibility and in here, now we're going to find the new hearing devices page. I don't have a device to show you this feature on action. However, what I can tell you is that now Windows 11 version 24H2 supports hearing aids with Bluetooth low energy audio or LE audio technology. Once the device is paired, you can pair and stream audio and take calls. It is also possible to control audio presets and ambient sounds and experience enhancements from the Bluetooth and devices settings page. You can also adjust the volume of the ambient sound coming from the hearing aids, including the settings to get in a few improvements, including monitoring the battery life and connections and status. Also as part of the accessibility settings, if we go to the color filters page, and if we turn on the feature, and if we select, for example, this option right here, one thing that's new is that you can now control the intensity and the color boost. 
If you want to reset the settings, just click this button. Now on privacy and security, if we go to the locations page, you are going to find this new notify when apps request locations toggle switch. If you turn this on or off, you can determine if the apps can have access to the wireless networks near you to detect your location. Additionally, a new dial box will prompt the first time that an app tries to access your location or wireless information. So you can allow or deny access without having to navigate to the settings app. When permission is granted, apps that use location or wireless information will now appear in recent activities on the locations page, which is this one right here. Also, the location icon will show in the taskbar while the app is in use. Now that we're in privacy and security, let's also talk about device encryption. Device encryption is not new to Windows 11. However, starting with version 24H2, Microsoft is relaxing some of the uh, requirements to enable these features so even more devices can access device encryption regardless if they use Windows 11 Pro or Windows 11 Home. As a result, during the installation process, the system will automatically enable device encryption on your computer and it will upload the recovery key to your Microsoft account. And this is very important that if you turn on this feature manually or you perform a clean installation of Windows 11 version 24H2 or higher release, you have to make sure that the recovery key is on your Microsoft account. Otherwise, if something happens and the computer requires that encryption key, you won't be able to boot to your system. Now, if you plan to do a clean installation of Windows 11 and you want to prevent the system from enabling device encryption automatically, you can check the video description where I have a link to the tutorial on how to do this. Also, if you no longer want to use this feature, which I don't recommend, but if you don't want to use it, you can turn it off right here. Now, device encryption, it's actually a bit locker, but it's a limited version of that encryption feature. And that is why it's available on more devices, including on Windows 11 Pro. Now, also on the uh, privacy settings, if we go to Activer History, we're not going to see new features. However, the option to clear the history is no longer available on this page. Now, if we go to the Searching Windows page, Microsoft is now removing the option that it used to be called Respect Power Settings that is no longer available on the page. Now, if we go to Windows Update, and then we go to advanced options and then on delivery optimization we are going to notice that this new feature update is redesigning how these settings appear on the settings app in the past we have different pages for for download options and upload options in the past we had a different page that grouped the download and upload options however now they have been transferred to the main deliver optimization section and you can still change the same settings however the options are quicker to find and edit from here you can also access the activity monitor which also before had a specific page that you can go to see these settings starting with version 24h2 windows 11 no longer includes some of the legacy apps that includes Warpad, Mail and Calendar, Cortana, and Movies and TV. Also, the feature ships with the default new Outlook app for Windows 11. I'm not gonna get too much into that app because it's been out for a while and technically you can use it right now on Windows 11 and you don't have to be on version 24H2 and it's going outside of the scope of this video. Also, I'm not going to talk too much about Copilot because Microsoft has already changed from being a feature on Windows 11 into a web app and that's also available not only for version 24H2 but it's also available for the uh, 23H2 update. But basically, you can now use this web application that you can resize, move around, and the system no longer can provide actions within the system. However, in the past, Microsoft has hinted that we might see more Copilot integrations within the settings app and throughout the operating system. Starting with this feature update, the Bib script now becomes a feature on demand which you can remove from the system. And to do that, you need to go to the system section and then from optional features, you're going to find the Vivi script that's right here. And you can click the remove button to like get it out of the system. Starting with the 2024 update, the Windows kernel now integrates Rust. 
Rust is an open source programming language available on GitHub that is designed primarily to build operating system but also works to build applications. The language is very popular among programmers since it offers syntax and performance similar to C++ and provides graded memory security without garbage collection. On the Windows update page, we're not going to find any new features that you can turn on. However, starting with this feature update, there are two significant improvements for the Windows update system to make updates more efficient and less intrusive with checkpoints and hot patching. The new update mechanism known as hot patching eliminates the need to force a computer to reboot every time you need to install a security update. The process works by patching the code already running in memory, avoiding the need to restart the process, thereby ensuring higher availability and reducing disruptions. The company plans to use this method to deploy the monthly security updates without requiring to restart to apply the changes. The only caveat is that this doesn't mean that reboots will never be needed since hot patching requires a baseline update that continues to mandate a restart every few months. In other words, after upgrading to version 24H2, you will have to restart the device, but only a few times a year. This will likely happen during the January, April, July, and October updates. Also remember that the hot patching method is for security updates. It doesn't include verticals or feature updates. Finally, as part of version 24H2, Windows 11 is also introducing checkpoint cumulative updates, a new method that make it easier and faster to download and install updates with new features and security patches. The new feature allows the computer to create checkpoints, which serves as new baseline for subsequent updates. Instead of including all the changes since the last original release of the operating system, updates will only contain the changes made since the last checkpoint. This approach will result in a smaller update packages that are faster to download and install. The company plans to roll out updates as checkpoints several times a year, and subsequent updates will only contain the incremental changes since the last checkpoint. This new approach works automatically and you don't have to configure anything on your computer. Checkpoints cumulative updates is available for Windows 11 and also for Windows Server 2025. All the version of Windows 11 or Windows 10 will continue to receive updates with the traditional experience. Microsoft is also updating the Windows setup experience with a new interface that users will notice when performing a clean installation or upgrade through a USB bootable media. The company also notes that all the features will continue to be supported, even unattended support. So basically, this is the new interface that you're going to encounter when you want to perform a clean installation or upgrade of Windows 11. We still get a Windows Vista Vive with this update. However, the interface has been changed a bit. So first you will have to select your language settings. And then when you click the next button and then on the next page, that's where you're going to configure your keyboard and input method. As we go through the wizard, we now see that we have a page that allows us to check the option that allows us to confirm how do we want to proceed with the wizard. You have the option to install Windows 11 or repair the computer. In this case, we're just going to select the install Windows 11. And then to proceed, you have to agree that everything will be deleted, including files, apps, and settings, if you continue with this process. Of course, you have the option to type your product key, but you can always do that later. Then, as always, you can choose the edition of Windows 11 that you want to install on the computer. And then if we continue, you have to accept the terms. And in here, you're going to notice that this interface to manage the drive is changed a little bit, but basically the options were at the bottom right here, and now they are located at the top. If you have different partitions on the drive, you can select and delete the partitions and you can also create new partitions. Once you're ready to install Windows 11, we can click next, but the installation will not proceed yet because you actually have to click the install button. And as you can see, now we get an experience similar to doing an in-place upgrade through the desktop experience. After the files are copied, the computer will restart a few times, and then you will have to go through the out of box experience, which is often also known as the initial setup. However, that experience hasn't changed significantly on version 24H2. Now, if you're wondering if this feature update is going to improve the gaming experience, the answer to that is 
depends because there is a change that is going to make gaming better. However, that only is going to happen for AMD Ryzen 9000 and 7000 series processors. So after upgrading to version 24H2, this update includes fixes to address an issue with the branch prediction feature that boosts gaming performance by more than 10%. So if you have an AMD device, you might see some improvements on gaming performance. Now up to here, all the features are going to be available for most devices compatible with Windows 11. Now, Microsoft is also planning to roll out some AI specific features. However, those features are going to require some new hardware, such as an MPU. And more than likely, only on Copilot Plus PC, you will be able to access these next features. I don't have them. So just let me give you a quick overview of what to expect. It isn't clear when it's going to be available, but one of the features that we're expecting that's going to use AI, that is Windows Recall. And this feature allows you to scroll back in time to find anything you have done in the computer. The feature works in the background to take a screenshot of everything you do in the computer. Using several on-device AI models, the feature analyzes and makes every content searchable using natural language, whether it's text or image. Due to security and privacy concerns, the feature has been delayed. Next up, we have the Windows Studio effects. And this is a set of features that uses AI to enhance video calls, audio quality using an MPU. Some of these effects include automatic framing, background blur, eye contact, voice focus, portrait light, created filters, and AI contact teleprompter. Of all these features, you might get some of all of them, depending on, on the capabilities of the actual computer. Also, even though we do have live captions on Windows 11, there is an update that will be available that will use AI to make the experience a lot better. And then we have voice clarity, which is a feature that uses AI to remove background noise, cancel echoes, and reduce real-time reverberation on video or voice only calls or when recording audio. The feature works automatically on supported applications. And finally, another highly anticipated feature is called Auto Super Resolution or Auto SR. The feature is aimed at PC gaming and it uses AI to upscale games to improve frame rates and image quality. Auto Super Resolution is exclusive to Copala Plus PCs since one of the requirements is an MPU. Also, the feature will only be available for a select number of games. If you happen to have a Copala Plus PC, you will find that option on settings, system display, and more specifically on the graphics section. And finally, on Windows 11 version 24H2, you're also going to find the Windows Copala runtime. This isn't actually a new feature, but instead it's a layer in the operating system that integrates all the different AI models that can run simultaneously locally on the computer to power most of the AI experiences, such as Windows Recalled, Studio Effects, Auto Super Resolution, Voice Focus, and many other features. Furthermore, the uh, software giant is also making available the, uh, the Windows Copilot library, which includes the new APIs for developers to integrate AI features into their apps. The Copilot app will continue to depend on the cloud to process data and produce responses to your questions. However, many of the AI features that you're going to see on Windows 11 will run on device without an internet connection. And those were pretty much all the new features and changes that you are going to find on Windows 11 version 24H2. Now I'm just going to give you some answer to some common questions. For example, when Windows 11 version 24H2 will be released, on June 18, 2024, the feature became available for Copala Plus PCs with the core features and changes necessary to bring those devices to market. The second release will be available sometime in September or October. That might change. So please check the video description with the link to the comprehensive overview of the update and includes the latest information on the release date and other updates. Now, will version 24H2 will be a free upgrade? And the answer is yes. The uh, 2024 update is a free upgrade for compatible Windows 11 and 10 devices. And the next question is, does Windows 11 version 24H2 will require a reinstallation? And the answer is yes. Since this is a significant refresh, it will require a reinstallation. So I always recommend to create a backup before proceeding. Now, will Microsoft force the Windows 11 version 24H2 on existing PCs? And the answer is no. The company won't force the new feature update for existing devices. Once the feature is ready, you'll be notified to download a new version and you'll have to do this process manually. 
However, as time goes on and the version that you're already running on your computer is near the end of service, Microsoft may update the computer automatically to maintain support. Now, how to upgrade to version 24H2? The easiest way to upgrade is through Windows Update. If you're a seeker, you can force the upgrade by going to the settings app and then on Windows Update, you want to make sure that you have this feature turned on and then click the check for updates button. If the update is available for your computer, you will have the option to download and install it on your computer. Other ways that you can upgrade to this new version is using a USB installation media or the ISO file to perform an in-place upgrade or a clean installation. In addition, you can also use the installation assistant to upgrade. If you want to upgrade early to version 24H2, you can use the release preview channel from the Windows Insider program. Also check the video description for more information. Now for the next question that I want to answer for you is, will every PC receive all the features found on version 24H2? And the short answer is no, because some of the features will require new hardware this time around. Features like Windows Recall, Studio FX, Auto Super Resolution, and many other will require a Copilot Plus PC. And finally, the question that I get often is, what's going on with Windows Recall on version 24H2? Like I said previously on the video, the feature has been delayed. Microsoft actually plans to resume testing the AI feature, but only Copilot Plus PCs will be able to test it. And we don't have a release date for this specific feature. And that's it. Remember to like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet. And I just hope this video was informative for you and I would like to thank you for viewing.